eye. In this video, we're going to have a look at the anatomy of a programming project. But instead of just looking at the computational thinking skills, we're also going to look at a wider problem solving skills and try and put it in that context. So this is a times table game that um, I tend to use with my year six pupils. Um, so that's uh, 10 to 11 year olds in their final year of primary school education. And I wouldn't do this until they've done some more basic uh, introductory programming projects first. Um, it pretty much uh, uses all of the programming tools that are out there, sequence, iteration, selection, and variables. Um, it dips very briefly into pretty much all the computational thinking skills, but it's quite rich for a wide range of problem solving attitudes as well. So let's have a little look and have a look at the little program and how we would start. Now nearly always I would start the children by having a look at a working copy of the program. And we show, the, show them this, one as a, as, as a hook and say, well, you know, you're gonna build your own version of this, <laughs> you know. Um, but then to say, well, actually, uh, we can't actually let you go and start building this until you've decomposed, until you've broken this project up into all of its different parts. And at this point, you know, some of the children start trying to get into code and we're saying to them, well, no, 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 it's not to do with the code. It's about asking a question, things like, um, what objects do we need to make? And what do we need to make those objects do? So we might be looking at something like the, the, the small um, numbers that bounce around the screen. And we might be saying, well, you know, what do all of these do? Well, if you look carefully, you see that they all move, um, they all bounce off the edge. And if you really look carefully, carefully and ran this a few times, you'd see that they also always start in a random direction. So that's part of sort of coping with complexity. And complexity is about coping with multiple things that are all happening all at the same time. And this is a very good one for that because of course there are lots of things happening um, across the program. Um, it's quite nice also at some point, not as a major point of this, but to ask children, well, you know, what would, where would be the best place to start when you start making this? Um, and there are sort of, there are no, there are wrong answers, but there are lots of possible right answers with this. And we're starting to get children to think about concentrating on the most important part of a, of, of a problem. Um, and lots of them will choose to start by making some of those numbers bounce around because they notice that, that, that there's lots of them. So just briefly asking them to justify why they're doing that. Um, is, is a nice sort of um, problem solving questioning um, technique as well. Um, what, another part of what we'll do is actually, once they start to actually make this and they start to go out and do this, we'll say to them, well, look, you know, we don't do these things in a vacuum. You've done some programming before. You're totally okay to go and magpie any ideas that you've, you've found previously. And often that might be um, might be going have a look at a previous program they've made. In this case, it might be something like our slug troll game that we did in year four, which was a more simple program. And um, could we take anything in there? Now, there is actually a bit of continuous movement that happens in there, but it's it's done in a different way. So of course, what they've got to do is to go and see if they can adapt some of those solutions to solve a new problem. Um, and so we're, we're dipping into generalization here, which, are, which I think is really useful and a really good problem solving skill to have as well. Um, once they've finished decomposing their project and thinking about um, where is a good place to start, then of course they get out and they start making that quite independently. And this is important that they have an attitude of being experimenters and debuggers. Okay, this is about understanding that there is an iterative process, a, a looping circular process of making something, testing something and debugging something. And of course, it's so important to say that it's okay that you get things wrong, that you make bugs because bugs are normal. And that process of experimenting is really important. Um, so that's probably the sort of first attitude that children, we have to develop with children by telling them that that's important, okay. 
But of course, at some point they're going to get stuck and stuck is normal. Uh, if they don't get stuck in a project, then I tend to think they're actually not really learning anything or I, I haven't actually given them a hard enough challenge. Uh, let's have a little look here. So uh, they're trying to add a point when they um, uh, click on a number in the two times table and subtract a point each time they click on the wrong number. Okay, so they, they can go back to their algorithm, they can bow back to their decomposed um, project that they did in the first place. Um, and they're gonna get stuck. Now, of course, if they don't have the attitude of learning from the setbacks, or if we haven't said that actually persevering is, is important, even if you can't see the solution, then they'll often give up. Um, and I've talked a lot about um, learn helplessness and how to overcome that elsewhere. But in this programming project, it might be that we just get them first of all to explain, what are you trying to do here? Go back to your list of where you decompose this and, and, and tell us which bit are you trying to focus on? It might be as simple as just asking them about any keywords in that. And can they spot any keywords? Can they spot any links between the keywords and the, and the programming blocks that they might use? If they're still stuck, it might be a case of giving them a hint card, giving them something that gives them some idea of some of the blocks, but not how to use it. In fact, I never go any further than that. I never do the programming for children because that's really important. They can puzzle it out at that point to work out how something works and that's important. So being that persistent problem solver and valuing that is important. Another thing that we'll do is often um, children will come up with multiple different solutions to the same things. And that's really exciting and really normal. And we need to value that. Um, it might be in the early days when a child, say a child comes up with a, a, a quite a quick solution to something that we say, well, actually, can you look for any other ways that you could solve this? And this is a good sort of teacher intervention to draw those children who, who have very quickly got a solution. Getting them to value that actually there is more than one way to solve this and find more than one solution, then they can choose the one that they think is most efficient or, or best later on. And actually this tolerance for ambiguity, one of the nice things also is to ask them to have a look at how each other have solved it ask the children sitting next to each other to have a look at each other's code. I can guarantee you they will solve things in very different ways. And to just ask them, well actually, there is more than one way to solve this problem, just to recognize that. But let's not just stop there because tolerance for ambiguity is important. Uh, and But actually it's important also to, to encourage them to become evaluators of this work as well and go that next step. And this is about saying, well okay, let's have a look at these different solutions. Which one do you think's best? What criteria do you think you you would um, you would say is best? And this is quite an important step for children to ask them to sort of justify and value and look at each other's work and see um, ha ha um, how it compares with somebody else's as well. Um, and that's an important sort of step in that sort of problem-solving toolkit, really becoming an evaluator as well. Um, and then, of course. We're constantly um, through this process because you saw that the, 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 the breadth of the project, there's lots and lots of parts to that. And so actually getting them to become refiners of a program. Now it's true to say that it's quite possible, you, you don't want children to settle for the very first thing they make. And you don't want them to refine it to the nth degree to the point where they're redesigning the backgrounds for every little pixel because that's often a waste of time. So you want them really to get to that point where you, they've got a, a refining understanding that involves um, developing a project to the point where it's good for the user, um, but it's not over refined and we've not sort of wasted a lot of time um, doing the boring bit, so to speak. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, I think it's very important, we just mentioned the user in here, at some point in this project it's very important to get other children to crit critique each other's work. And this is more about the set criteria 
of, of a user. Well, I want I want to be able to easily click on the buttons. I want to I want to see that this this is actually doing the the game that I wanted to do. I I'm going to either get bored or I'm going to really enjoy it. You know, so it, it's all about what is the user's criteria for actually uh, thinking that this is a good game, and that's quite quite important um, problem solving to to get get that involved with as well. Okay, my favourite part personally and this doesn't I've mentioned this as the last slide but it doesn't necessarily just happen at the end my favorite bit is the bit where children start thinking about how a project could be extended and that often starts right in the beginning where they start decomposing something because they see the program over and over again because they're they're trying to work out how it works and they will often say well Mr Bag you know wouldn't it be great if um, I could make the balls go faster for the next level or I could have a next level or I could um, um, <clears throat> I could make it so that when the balls cross over each other, they, they go a bit faster or a bit slower or, or do something else. And here what they're trying to do is they're thinking about how can I make this better? How can I extend this project? And what I also love is where we encourage them uh, uh, to actually, well, what could I develop out of this idea? How could I generalize this sort of principle of how this works and use these ideas elsewhere? And at this point, you realize that this is a very open-ended project. And although it looks like something that, 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 that has a very defined sort of end, there's lots, lots more to it than just that. I hope you've enjoyed um, our little look at some of the problem solving involved in a programming project. And um, you can find this pr um, project on my website. And you can also find the um, problem solving cards um, on there too. And the, the links at the end of the project. Thanks for listening.